All right, so what I got from this Lakers game, and obviously this is me re-recording. For some reason, the sound wasn't working. I guess YouTube didn't like what I had to say. So I think what I was saying before is the Lakers basically just got by this. The Grizzlies are fool's gold. They're, they're going to lose the series, obviously. They, they are about two stars away from making any kind of noise. Ja is a good player, obviously. But he's not a great basketball player yet. He's more of an offensive guy than anything else. Desmond Bain has had an, a great night, but it's something that happens every now and then, a blue moon type thing. You can't rely on that. So this is a team where you need at least two more guys to help Ja out on a daily basis consistently, not every now and then, not every Tuesday. I'm talking a guy that is on Ja's level where like he can count on him. He needs one or two more guys to be able to beat a team like the Lakers. All these regular season wins, they were meaningless wins that they won, guys, where guys don't play 100% all the time. So that's what I'm telling you. These records are kind of bullshit. If every game were a playoff game in the regular season and they shortened the season to like 52 games, we'd get a lot better basketball because it's 82 games, so they know they can slack off. Everyone does it, so they know, ah, we just need this amount of wins. We'll just get by. And then all of a sudden, they play different. It's just stupid. I think they need to make the season 52 games or whatever, 56 games, and then make the even make the playoffs maybe a little longer maybe add an extra two games or something or anything's better than what we have we don't need 82 games in a year guys even 60 is fine anything less than 82 we don't even get the best out of our players in the playoffs we want the best out of them so let's make the make it 50 60 60 games i remember there were two seasons we did that in the two years we did that we had the best playoffs ever our play our players were fresh they were ready to go it was exciting it was riveting now it's just sloppy guys now you're just hoping a guy gets through a series so he has enough for the next round and that's not the way it should be where guys have nothing left in the tank like that doesn't make for good basketball now with the lakers they're over here, same story, Anthony Davis, 12 points. Like, he just can't get going. I don't know what it is. Is it Jaron Jackson that's really bothering him? I don't know. He just can't consistently drop 20. And, again, LeBron has to save the day. Austin Reeves, he's not going to sustain 23 every night. He's going to give you 10 to 15, 23, fine. But you need guys to step up. And they had a team effort. Everyone chipped in at least a point or two, so... That's good, but you'd like to see that every night. Schroeder was still making stupid mistakes that he shouldn't be making this late in his career. And they're still too reliant on LeBron. Who's the other guy that's going to really step up? It's supposed to be Anthony Davis, but he's just not doing it. Who's going to be that other guy? Until Anthony Davis and another guy is going to step up, this team is going to lose in the next round, guys. Like Until I see more, that's what I'm going with. Now, the stats... Let's see, the turnovers, Lakers had more turnovers, less assists, and they shot the three terribly, but not as bad as the 21% the Grizzlies did, 9 for 42. So that's what saved them. The Grizzlies just shot a little worse. Had they played a better team, they lose this game. Even though they dropped 117, they're losing this game because of all the threes they allowed, 42. If this is the Warriors, you're losing 145 to 117, easy. So, I don't think this win, like, yeah, they win. They went to overtime. <laughs> he got even more tired. Seemed like LeBron was conserving his energy to the fourth quarter because he didn't score in the first quarter, they said, I think, or like something very small. He was, like, pacing himself, it looked like. It's almost like he knew this was going to overtime. Then one second before the game, they stole the ball, and LeBron made the full-court shot. I was saying to my girlfriend, I was like, yeah, this is a good sign. This is showing us that they're going to win. Them, like, LeBron making that from full court, even though they knew it wasn't going to count, like, nothing but net, stop it, man. That was just a sign just to show us. And that's what this game is about. It's like Disney. It's all about, you know, the the great story and what looks aesthetically pleasing, you know. So it's like, oh, LeBron made it from half court. Yep, they're going to go and win in overtime. I knew right away. So, yeah, now with this Miami Heat game, let's take a look at this. With this Miami Heat game, guys, I'm just going to say it, man. 
few things with this. I think that they turned the magnets on for sure for Jimmy. Like they just wanted the Heat to win this game. I think it's because Giannis is hurt, guys. I think he's playing through an injury right now that's actually grueling. And it's going to take him in and out of the lineup throughout this whole playoffs. So I don't think the NBA wants to mess around with that. So I think the NBA just wants to pass the uh, Miami Heat. Because let's face it, Jimmy Butler by himself is a better star or a better eye. Something better to watch. It's, I'd rather, Let's put it this way. We'd all rather watch Jimmy Butler play than Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Drew Holiday. They're, like, more marketable, the Heat are. The Heat are way more marketable. Even with Giannis on the books, I'd say the Heat are more marketable. But then again, Giannis is younger, had a triple-double. I think, I don't know, man. It's two things. It's either Giannis is hurt and the NBA knows it and they just want Miami to just win and let Giannis rest for next year. Or it's this one, guys. They want Giannis down 3-1, and then he comes back and beats them and shows the world he's still the best. I don't know, guys. We're going to have to see what happens next game. Excuse me. Let's put it this way. If the Bucks win next game, they're going to win the series. They're trying to make Giannis be the great Giannis. He comes back, and he triumphants and carries his team to victory down 3-1. You know what I mean? That's such a great story. Imagine him and LeBron do it. Like... That'd be crazy. And it's like, who's the greater gladiator? Like, it's a story, guys. You got to play the stories. Or, yeah, I think it's it's either that. It's it's one of those. Yeah, so Giannis, it's either that or he comes, he comes back 3-1 and beats them from 3-1. Or he's hurt and he loses next game, guys. That's what it is. So, this is a big game, guys. If Miami wins it, then it's because Giannis is hurt, guys. And the NBA is just trying to let him go get his surgery or just sit out and rest for next year. So just keep an eye for this next game, guys. Like, Because the Bucks they had the lead the whole game. They had a 15-point lead at one point, as the Lakers did too. But the Bucks had a 15-point lead. And that Heat crowd was still so into the game. They never shut down. They never got quiet. So that it's crazy in Miami, man. So, I don't know. We're, we're, let's just see what happens in the next game. The next game is going to tell us a lot, guys. So, circle this game, the next game on your calendar for this. Because if the Bucks win, they're coming back and they're winning the series, guys. And that's that's what the NBA's hand is going to be if they win, guys. Giannis had a great game. Brooke Lopez, unexpectedly 36. If you don't get this from Brooke Lopez, you're getting blown out, guys. Like, who's that really that other star? Chris Middleton fouled out, only gave you 14. Like, so who's really that other star? I don't trust the Bucks, guys. The more I think about it, the more I watch them, I trust Miami more. I trust Jimmy Butler more. But at the same time, who the hell's helping Jimmy Butler? No one. It was literally all Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler falls, they lose. He scored half of their points. <laughs> literally, he scored half of their points, guys. So, if he's not there, they lose. So, I'm going to pump my brakes on this. Let's see how game five goes. I think Giannis comes back and they win. Like, I think the NBA, unless he's hurt, guys. If Giannis is hurt, throw this out of the window, what I'm going to say right now. If Giannis is hurt, they're losing next game. But if Giannis is not hurt, he's going to come back and win, guys. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.